I was preaching a few years ago in New York, and I'd been called to this area primarily because the Mormons had descended upon it, and they had really torn up the community. And they had more than 20 Mormon missionaries working in the area, and the churches surrounding this tri-state area were very uptight. And I came, and they said, uh, well, you can have as long as you want, and... Uh, all the churches are going to cooperate, so I knew they were in trouble, because when all the churches cooperate, they've got to be in trouble. <laughs> the rest of the time, they're fighting about whether they're going to sprinkle, pour, or immerse, or use wine, grape juice, or Coca-Cola at the communion service. <laughs> but when they're uptight, I mean automatically, you see, they want to get together. Everybody invited me. I knew they were in trouble. So I came. I lectured on Mormonism this night for an hour and a half, and then the question period came. And there were people hanging out the windows and out on the lawn with loudspeakers, and it was a fantastically jammed place, very much like this, tonight. And a Mormon missionary stood up, very polite fellow, well-educated, graduate of BYU, apparently. And uh, he said, uh, sir, I would like to ask you a question. I said, go ahead. He said, you don't believe in the Book of Mormon, the Pearl of Great Price, and Doctrine and Covenants. I said, I do not. He said, but you do believe the Bible is the Word of God. I said, I most certainly do. He said, so do I. I said, good. He said, if I can show you from the Bible that Joseph Smith and Brigham Young taught the truth about God, will you believe it? I said, certainly. He said, all right, take your Bible. Every Christian in the place, you can hear the Bibles open. <laughs> Never saw Christians look through Bibles so fast in their lives. And he started quoting... Underneath us are the everlasting arms. God has arms. The finger of the Lord wrote on the wall. God has fingers. My eye is not closed that I cannot see. God has eyes. My ear is not stopped that I cannot hear. God has ears. The word has gone out of my mouth. God has a mouth. Your feasts are a stench in my nostrils. God has a nose. His head and his hair were as white as wool. God has a head and hair as white as wool. His feet are planted in the footsteps of the sea. God has feet. And he went on. Eyes, ears, nose, mouth, hands, feet, hair. Right down the line. And I could tell who the Mormons were in the audience because I could see the people going. <laughs> and there were quite a few Mormons there. When he got all finished, he said, there you are, sir, out of the scriptures themselves. God is an exalted man, just as Joseph Smith, our prophet, taught. I said, would you read one more verse for us? He said, sure. I said, good. Read it without comment, just the way you read those. All right. Psalm 91, verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. <laughs> the chicken. <laughs> the same verse that says, his head and his hair were as white of wool, says out of his mouth comes a sharp, two-edged sword. God has a sword for a tongue. <laughs> you believe that? He started to laugh. He said, no, sir. I said, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Now he's a loaf of bread. <laughs> I am the true vine. Now he's a vegetable. <laughs> I am the way, now he's a path. I am the door, wood, hinges, knob. Well, even the Mormons were laughing now. And I said, what am I using? And he said, figurative language. I said, right. I said, now the same figurative language which you are using to prove that God is an exalted man, I can use to prove that he's a chicken, a loaf of bread, or a vine. I said, now, by what law of logic do you forbid me and permit yourself? I said, do you see what I mean? He said, yes, sir. I said, fine. Joseph and Brigham wouldn't have known figurative language if it bit them. They were not biblical scholars. So they took literalistic terms and they made God a big man. But you can't do that because... The Bible doesn't teach God as a big man. The Bible says only once. John 4, 24. 
God is spirit. They that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Uh, Jesus Christ told us that spirit does not possess flesh and bone. Pure spirit. Luke 24, 37 through 39. He said to his disciples, handle me and see. A spirit does not have flesh and bone as you see me have. So God is spirit and spirit does not possess flesh and bone. Therefore, the Father does not have a body of flesh and bone as tangible as man. Joseph Smith did not tell the truth. Adam is not our Father and our God. And the reason he's not is because Adam was the first man created by God. And he sinned, fell, and plunged the human race over the precipice of eternal judgment. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 says, Jesus Christ is the last Adam who brings us to life, whereas the first Adam executed us by sin. Let us not bandy words. Joseph Smith says, We have imagined and supposed that God was God from all eternity. I'm going to take away the veil so that you may see. I'm going to refute this idea. Oh, God wasn't God from all eternity. Really? I'm going to show you how God came to be God. Oh, no. Psalm 90 Verse 2 says, From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. From eternity to eternity, he never changes. Malachi 3, 6, I, the Lord thy God, I never change. Joseph Smith's God is not the God of the Bible. Joseph Smith's revelation is not the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Joseph Smith is not a prophet of God. Now we know that Joseph is not a prophet because he contradicts the scripture. And whatever contradicts scripture cannot be accepted as divine revelation. 